name is Imran and uh, I am into so much into DevOps and training and of course also cloud computing. These are today's goal. First, I'm going to talk about my credibility. Why you should learn DevOps? I'll give you three good reasons to learn DevOps. We'll be defining DevOps and this time it's going to be through animated video that I have created for you. So we'll understand the entire process of um, from software development to delivery. Then we'll talk about DevOps skill set. Once you understand what is DevOps, we'll understand what do you need to have in you so you can work as a DevOps engineer or a consultant or an architect. And then we'll talk about what does our core course covers. Okay, we'll talk about the course coverage. And then finally, I'll open up the session for Q&A. You can ask me as many as questions you want. Okay, so let's begin about my credibility. I've been doing DevOps from 2012 or 13, 2013 initially. Um, and uh, till the, uh, from that time till today, I've been into doing a lot of uh, into automation, cloud computing, also virtualization, and now containerization, of course. So in my uh, distance past, I have uh, done a lot of certification. So some Red Hat certification, I'm certified in Ansible, Red Hat OpenStack, certified in cluster storage, OpenShift Kubernetes cluster, and also certified in Puppet. In my distance past, uh, when I was working as a VMware engineer, I did VMware certified professional certification. I'm also certified in Python from EDX. And in AWS, I'm certified in AWS SysOps and AWS DevOps professional and AWS security specialist. These are some certifications that I back. And uh, if you have any questions on certification, you can ask me after uh, the demo in the Q&A and of course in the course also I'll explain you which certificate is right for you There are a few more certification in the pipeline that I would be doing So these are some of my credibility as far as training is concerned. I've been training people for years uh, I've trained people in virtualization cloud computing Automation scripting and then DevOps. I've been training people on DevOps for years now. I've given online training uh, Corporate training classroom is anyways now gone so uh, it was all about my passion towards training and sharing really that I came into this. I don't work as just a part time trainer, but um, uh, we have uh, I invest a lot in training. Uh, we are also developing our own app for uh, hosting training videos and you'll also be accessing some of our apps in the course. OK, so that was about me. Now why you should learn DevOps. There are three good reasons which I say always. Uh, I'm sure you must have your own reason, but you have to understand that DevOps, and I think you already understand that much that DevOps is, you know, is one of the most talked concept in IT industry. Okay. It's been there from a very long time, but in recent few two years, it has become very popular. If you check Forbes, if you check Business Insider, there will be lots of articles you'll find about DevOps and why you should implement DevOps and why DevOps is good. So this big talking point, it is famous, of course, as people use the word booming, right? But money matters at the end of the, at the end of the day, right? It's also one of the highly paid job. Okay, if you're really good, you can get paid more than developers also. Okay, you can check that on Indeed, Glassdoor, Quora. Pay scale, okay. You can post a question on Quora also, and you can understand. You know, once you invest uh, in your career in DevOps, then are you going to get some returns back or not? Right. The third good reason is so from a long time, IT industry is divided into two parts: development and operations, and there's a huge gap in between these two parties. Okay. Uh, developers can create software very quickly and efficiently today, but operations team is still slow in delivering those softwares to the users. So it doesn't matter how much good you are in creating something, and right? if you're not able to deliver it to the audience, then you don't make money. Right? When it comes to business, the delivery is very, very important. I hope everyone agrees to that. Okay. Think about think about you are uh, manufacturing some packaged food, right? You know to uh, you know how to do that you are best in that 
but if you're not able to reach the consumer market then you don't make money right if your logistic is poor you don't make money right or you suffer in the business so devops solves the problem of delivery okay as fast as the developer can create the software that much fast devops can deliver the softwares and the features to the end users okay so it escalate accelerate uh, the, uh, the delivery pipeline okay god that was a tongue freeze okay anyways let's continue so these are three good reasons okay why you should learn devops and uh, yeah uh, a third reason um, so everybody would like to deliver their software quickly and efficiently that means everyone needs devops right so there's a huge demand in the market of devops and i think it just got started okay and uh, i don't think it's going to become stable any soon okay there will be huge demand of devops because one devops engineer can do uh, work of lot many employees okay so everyone really needs devops in today's time okay so why me so i do devops every day uh, in terms of consulting in terms of creating project video in terms of delivering the training and i've been doing it for years now uh, you can check my profile on linkedin as well i've trained thousands of candidates in devops i have never kept a count okay but this is too many now my main focus is going to be on real time implementation i will show you how you can use a particular tool a process or a concept in solving your real world problem that's my main focus of the course and that's the only reason uh, why my course mainly is popular okay because i show real time implementation i will teach you how you can excel in software delivery i talked about devops solves the problem of delivery i'll show you how you can excel no matter what situation you get into you would be able to automate and deliver your software quickly and efficiently okay when i say software it doesn't just mean uh, the web based softwares or mobile app okay any code any code okay data science project any project okay you can implement so i'll show you how multiple technologies work together you may be um, operations and you may know automation you may maybe you're good in ansible or maybe you're good in jenkins or maybe you're good in docker or maybe you're good in one or the other technology okay that doesn't help you should know at the end of the day how to connect all the technologies together that's the most important part and in this course we'll start integrating our in in two to third uh, second or third week we'll start integrating tools one by one by one and by the end of the course you would have integrated all the tools together Okay, it will be pretty awesome. You, I have a lot of materials for you. You have practicals, a lot of exercises. You're going to get even exercises from Google Classroom. Uh, I have a book, Decoding DevOps book, which you can use as a reference in the course, and lots of material ready you have. All right, and also I'm very passionate about training, so I don't do half-heartedly. Okay, uh, this is my bread and butter. Right, so I'm very, very passionate about training, and you can ask me any question in the class anytime you want. Okay, so what exactly is DevOps? Now, this I'm going to show you from with an animated video that I have created. Okay, spend a lot of time on this actually, and it's also on YouTube now. So I'm gonna. Uh, everyone likes 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 a story, right? You like a story? Yes. I think everyone loves the story. Okay, not the Lula wise. Okay, it's gonna be an interesting story. So story is about starts the story with Emma. It's a main character. Okay, Emma is gonna be a um, Emma is actually a very very artistic person. She is into creating art pieces and even selling art pieces. She has even a gallery. Go next. She has a gallery from where she sells art pieces and she's quite popular in the local market. Okay. Uh, people love her art uh, pieces or paintings and all. She's quite popular. But Emma wants to not just be local, but want to go global. Okay. She wants to have a mobile app from where she can sell her products. Okay. But Emma is not a developer. Okay. So she has no idea now what to do. 
she has a great idea the idea is great but she does not know how to implement the idea right because if you want to develop a mobile app you'll need group of you know developers testers system admin cloud data center this that so many things right and she doesn't have any of this she's expert in art not in technology so emma approaches a software consulting firm swoosh and she explains her idea this company is expert in creating products creating softwares mobile app and even hosting it so Raji explains Raji is going to be the director Raji explains the process is going to be development and delivery and then service okay so they're going to create the product create the mobile app deliver it to the end users and also give the service okay then she gets introduced to Avi who is going to be the project manager and uh, he's going to be he'll always close his eyes open your eyes so <laughs> Avi is uh, going to be the project manager of the development team okay development team okay open her eyes, his eyes so avi explains the project management how it is going to be how they're going to develop a product and explains different different technologies and awesome things that they will be implementing okay which impresses emma we also have akhil who is going to be the operations head and akhil is going to be in charge of delivering the product uh hosting the product you can say so he explains emma that how the mobile app will be hosted on cloud and data center and amazing technologies right after meeting with these experts emma decides to sign a deal okay she thinks these guys are really experts so she signs a deal okay let's understand the concept before we move ahead with the story let's understand some concepts of the development so development is a very well organized process very well defined process right the first stage in the development is requirement gathering okay the first step so when the pro no project starts right a kickstart meeting happens and the the requirement gathering is done so all the product features will be collected the user feature uh, the user requirement software requirement client requirement all this requirement gathering is done and then analysis is done on that requirement agents are going crazy here go go sorry okay uh, the next stage is planning okay so we have the requirement now what how are we going to proceed okay what do we need okay what do we want the cost resource and risk associated with the development that's the second stage the third stage is going to be a designing where architects based on the requirement and the resource and uh, the risk they're going to design the product okay once the product so uh, architects in this phase are actually going to create design documents which will be actually roadmap for the developers till now the product development has not started it's just designing now the development starts a bunch of intelligent and highly skilled developers are hired and who are expert in creating the product they are already very excited you see them all right so in this phase uh, the development happens hundreds and thousands and thousands and of lines of code has been written uh, to create the product once the product is created or part of it is created there will be a quality assurance team qa team or testing team you can call them they're going to test the product for any defects before it goes to the end user if there is any defect any bug it will be tested okay so software testers are going to be doing that or qa team also we call them okay that's the fifth stage next once the product is well tested it will be deployed to the data centers or the cloud data centers or wherever the deployment is going to be okay and bunch of operations smart and intelligent operations and system admin team uh, are going to help do that okay also it's responsibility of the operations team to make sure the product is up and running always the user user are always able to use it without any problem okay that's the responsibility of the operations team so it'll be 24 by 7 monitoring and all those things will be happening and of course there will be regular maintenance users will need some new changes or there could be new bug fixes or patches that needs to be deployed okay so there will be changes and the operations team also has to make sure that there is an uptime okay so maintenance is the last thing right and it's a balance between regular changes and uptime 
okay so let's understand now in a cyclic view okay this entire process so first we have come on requirement gathering then planning then architects are going to design the product then the development team is going to develop the product testers are going to test the product and then operation team is going to deploy and maintain and it goes on and on okay this process is called as sdlc software development life cycle okay software development life cycle i'm sure you must have heard about it if you're a developer you already know this if you are you no know, uh, from you know engineering background you already must have heard this or read this in in your books and all and right? sdlc software development life cycle this is software development life cycle okay and there are different models in sdlc okay which one to choose depends on the requirement you have waterfall model we have agile model which is very popular now you have spiral model big bang and there are a few other okay agile is being the most popular one today and we'll understand how and why and agile is also the mother of devops okay how we're going to see that that's why this whole story you're hearing so these models are really different roadways right to reach the same destination you want to reach a place and there are different routes you can take so which route to take is going to be based on uh, different different factors right risk time cost right so based on different different factors based on requirement actually you choose a particular route right so let's understand first waterfall model waterfall model works in phases first requirement phase completes then it goes to the design phase when the design phase completes it goes to the implementation the development phase when that is complete it moves to the testing phase when that is complete it goes to the maintenance phase okay this is waterfall model it works in phases and you have to complete a phase to go to the next phase you can't go backwards in this okay all right just a moment so waterfall is really a legacy model old traditional model um not used much today uh, we are going to talk about its, its disadvantages now so you cannot accommodate a new change in this waterfall model okay there is no going back if you made a decision requirement gathering is done designing is done you follow that there is no going back okay okay you're going to drop your email to your to the organizer chat okay do not drop your mail into public okay public chat put your email address people who joined into the organizer chat only so we can contact you for uh, the batch timing and everything okay so disadvantages you can't go back in waterfall model okay you cannot accommodate a new change and if you need a working software let's say you want to demonstrate to the customer customer is demanding right client is demanding you cannot demonstrate until the pro until this entire model is completed so you have to complete the product then only you can give it to the customer there are a lot of disadvantages if something breaks right in the testing phase then there's a lot of rework okay testing is done for the entire thing all of the product right and there could be then hundreds and thousands of bugs and vulnerabilities and so many things and then a lot of reworks needs to be done so there are a lot of disadvantages of waterfall model at least in today's time now okay so coming back to the story wait not there wait what happened why did refresh just a moment this is the only problem with the animated videos just a moment
Okay, yeah, coming back to the story. So Emma's requirement, she's not sure about all the requirement at once. She would like to observe the product development and then alter new requirement based on the idea because she's not aware about these mobile apps and these technologies. She's good in arts, right? So she's not sure about what all the requirements, maybe the requirement will change. In today's market, the users are very much demanding, okay? So the requirements of users will change and based on that, Emma's requirement change and based on that, the product requirement will change, right? So there is no way of altering a requirement into waterfall model. So waterfall model is a no-go. Okay, absolutely, we can't go with waterfall model. Not we, a we, the project manager. So go next. Okay, so all the requirement then, which could take months to develop is broken down into smaller list. Okay, let's say you have 50 features, you break down, divide it, you divide it by uh, 10. Okay, so now let's say you have, okay, coming back, sorry. Yeah, so uh, let's say you have 50 features and you divide it by five. Okay, so let's say you have 10 features in a list. Okay, so now the development is decided to be in iteration instead of developing all at once we're going to develop it in iteration so first we take let's say first five features or first 10 features of the product okay and uh, one iteration may take two to four weeks of time okay so development is not going to be in phases now it's going to be iterative okay so this is broken down into multiple iterations instead of developing all at once we'll do it in iteration this is called as agile okay agile is iterative the word agile really means quick and fast and what happens in the agile model is uh, you can you know you develop let's say 10 features okay so developing testing deployment and demonstration you demonstrate also to the customer so customer can give you or the client can give you more feedback okay so there is a feedback loop in agile so you don't need to complete the entire software to deliver it. Every iteration, there can be demonstration and you can even deliver the product to the end user. Let's say you have broken down into five iterations, right? But you can complete three iterations and deliver the product to the end user. You can get more feedback from the user. Okay. And every iteration, there is a testing done. You don't wait for the entire product development. Every iteration, there is a testing. Okay. And also demonstration. So there's a feedback loop. So, how we decides to get started with the Agile model, okay? So, Agile makes the development faster. So, development gets started. Of course, this, there was planning and all of that happened and then the development gets started. And then, uh, it's going to be quick and fast development and every time the operations team will be asked to deploy the product on servers so QA team can test it. So, there will be regular testing also will be conducted. So let me pause here and tell you one very important point. In waterfall model, operations team were less burdened. Okay. In agile model, there's regular deployments. Okay. So operations team will be more burdened. Okay. So going ahead. So operations team with whatever information they got deploys the product to the servers or the to the cloud or wherever the target is. But the testers are not able to access or maybe their software test cases are failing. Okay. There are issues with the deployment. Okay. So how we picks up the phone or mails or ticket and calls up to the operations team that your deployment has failed. And uh, Akhil is not so sure about what happened because Akhil deployed the product as per the requirement. Okay. As per the steps. But still the deployment failed. Developers are saying it works. It worked in their laptop, in their computer, but it's not working on production machine. That means the issue is with the operations team, right? You have to remember agile means fast. Okay, there will be fast development happening, regular development, regular code changes, regular deployment will be happening and there will be regular testing happening. And this is going to happen. Sometimes it happens every day. Okay, multiple times in a week. So operations team gets lots and lots of requests of deployment. Right? So they're really uh, you know, very much occupied with the regular deployment request. And also there are no clear instructions. 
right they're already occupied you have to remember with the production uptime system uptime and operations team is itil driven okay step by step okay stability itil is a process of approvals there are a lot of approvals it's like government office thing right approve 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 right documents and then only finally the changes have been you know they make the changes so they're already occupied and they're already itil driven they have a different mindset developer mindset is now agile but the operation is still waterfall okay but in all this mess avi has passed the deadline okay he has to demonstrate to the customer but he has passed the deadline and emma is waiting to see her first demo and she is just waiting okay because the deployment has failed somehow they convinces emma right and things goes back to the track right but this cannot be tolerated if this happens again and again this could be a problem there could be a problem so there is a rift now between avi and akhil development and operations okay they say you know you cannot keep failing the deployment because you know uh, we have to demonstrate to the customer also and it's going to go to the end user also later later so it has to be stable right so there is already a rift happening now so development versus operation started okay it was it is dev, it was development versus operation before devops yeah okay see you have to understand development and operations are poles apart development is agile quick regular changes okay operation is about all about stability safe being safe right you understand people with safe mindset and you understand people with you know uh, agile mindset right some people are uh, who take risks some people who are very safe right they're very different similarly over here okay development is agile they don't uh, think about you know whether it's going to fail the deployment or not it's all about regular changes but operations team needs to be you know making sure everything is stable so they're really poles apart so as they say that you know developer will just toss the code over the wall to the operations team and operation team has to deploy it based on the instruction that they got there are no clear instructions because developers don't care and don't understand much about operations so they'll just write the code and just throw it over to the developers to the operations team for the deployment okay there's a very famous saying tossing the code over the wall right so there's always fight developer will say deployments always take longer time and operations team will say there are no clear instruction that we get for the deployment we get half baked code we deploy and it fails it does not work so it's not our problem right so it's a blame game now right in all this blame game the customer is suffering okay the client is suffering right now the client is getting frustrated okay? because it's happening regularly right emma has also brought some end users to check the product right and uh, this is really uh, you know not acceptable right it's unhappy customer now reggie the director understands unhappy customer means business loss okay can lose the customer or the client right now he remembers reggie remembers there is there was an agile conference where there was a guy who was talking about devops something about devops you know by implementing devops you know you can deliver the product quickly and efficiently because development is agile but operation is waterfall okay and i'm not making this up this is a real thing that happened there was a guy called as patrick de bois in 2009 or some uh, he uh, you know delivered an agile in an agile conference he developed delivered a talk um, about devops that was the first time in the devops was talked about okay so he said that development is agile but operation is still waterfall They're not able to cope up so you need to both team needs to work together so then only the product can be delivered quickly and efficiently okay so reji remembered that okay he attended this agile conference so he thought of bringing in a devops consultant enter the devops okay so devops consultant promises that he's going to skyrocket the business gonna make sure the product is delivered quickly fast efficient blah 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 all the amazing things okay but this just doesn't happen uh, magically okay um he brings all the teams on board and explains that devops is not just about automation or delivering the code okay it starts with communication first of all all the teams has to communicate well 
collaborate effect more effectively and integrate all the tools and technologies together communication collaboration integration i'll explain you these points okay they are important points not just some words so to enable communication first the devops consultant explains developers about operations okay how operations works how the production servers are different how they have different networks how they have different storage different database designs and all right and how there are a high availability security and all those concepts right and it's not so easy to make regular code changes so explains the concept of operations to the developers and he also explains the concept of development to operations the other way he explains the operations team that you have to be more agile okay you have to deliver the code more quickly and more efficiently okay so operations team has to be working with the agile team with the development team right and the most important thing is automation he explains everyone how important automation is everyone who are involved in the software development life cycle or software delivery life cycle has to automate everything everything needs to be automated i remember back in 2012 and 13 that time uh, we were you know forced to do uh, automation everything okay we had no idea where we are going but you know there was you know this drive that was happening in the organization that automate 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 we had to automate everything so whatever tools we had whatever scripting we had we used to keep writing code and automation thing everything we automated but then finally then we understood why we were automating all those things again okay, you will also understand that today so everything needs to be automated a code build process code testing process software testing process infrastructure changes deployment and anything that is there in the software delivery has to be automated and there will be different different team involved in this right uh, software testers needs to have automation testing now okay infrastructure changes cloud if you're using a virtualization there cannot be manual changes you have to have automatic changes okay deployment operating system changes everything needs to be automated once everything is automated oh yeah nice video there yeah so development and operations team okay you will watch this once again this is nice okay so development and operation team decides to break the wall and decides to work together as a team together okay yeah and they are already very excited akhil is more excited here all right so there was not going to be tossing the code over the wall both party will be understanding each other and will be working together okay as a team like avengers now go move okay yeah these are our avengers move oh, come on avengers don't very stubborn okay so you have developers you have testers build and release system admin database admin all of the teams will be working together okay they'll be automating also everything together and they are actually they are automating now okay everything if people from different different teams are, are automating everything and then a devops life cycle is created everything that was automated gets stitched together integration okay that will give you devops life cycle not just automation integration of automation orchestration so devops life cycle code build process so developer makes a code change automatically the code will be built okay with some automation tool the code will be also automatically tested unit test integration test and also automatic code analysis will be done on the code okay so developer just makes a code change and everything happens automatically code analysis right and then the delivery automatic delivery the code is also deli delivered to different server any database change automatically gets delivered any security change firewall rule change everything gets automatically delivered okay it's all code based or a tool based excuse me once the code is delivered to the testing machine the software testing is automatically conducted if it returns right result then the automatic deployment of production can also happen okay and of course then the traffic of the live user is redirected to the new production systems if this is good 
if the user approves the new changes it will be kept otherwise you can roll back also automatically okay this is called as a devops life cycle okay developer makes a code change code will happens automatically code analysis code test happens automatically delivery of the code to the servers happens automatically any changes happens automatically software testing happens automatically and then the deployment to production also happens automatically okay this is called as devops life cycle this is our bread and butter okay take a look once again Nice slide there, huh? I, I love this part actually. Okay. Okay, so yeah, just a moment. Okay, so the DevOps life cycle, all the story that I told you was so you can understand the DevOps life cycle. Okay. One more view of DevOps lifecycle. Okay, this is on the slide. So developer makes a code change. Here there are some tools to make you understand much better. So developer makes a code change. For example, let's say on GitHub, developer makes a code change, and there'll be an automation tool like Jenkins that can fetch the code. Uh, with some tools, it can run unit test, integration test, and it will build the software by using build tools like Maven for Java. If there is Docker, then Docker images will be built automatically. Okay. And then the Jenkins will store the artifact. Artifact means this, I understand here for as a software. Okay. It's going to store the artifact or the software to a repository. Okay. This is called as continuous integration. So whenever developer makes a code change, this entire process happens automatically. Okay. So software is now ready. Now, any change at the infrastructure level, maybe you're using AWS, so any infrastructure change or infrastructure is not available, so automatically it will be provisioned or the changes would be done. Okay, once you have the environment, then the code will be deployed to the environment by using automation tool like Ansible, Puppet or Chef or Scripts. If there is a Kubernetes platform, then you know, kubectl and all will be used to do the deployment. And then when the deployment is happening, that there will be also test happening. So deployment will happen on dev environment, queue environment, staging environment, and finally production environment. Okay. Also the testing software testing also will be conducted. Any DB deployments are there that will be also done. Okay. When I say deploy your build here, this could mean anything. Okay. Not just code, but DB change, security change, anything. Okay. Everything is automated. This is DevOps lifecycle. This is our bread and butter. Okay. This is our target. All right. This is our goal organization hire devops or implement devops to have a devops life cycle really okay it starts with continuous integration but then it can go till staging deployment that is called as continuous delivery if you're also automatically deploying to production that's called as continuous deployment okay we're going to do few projects on this one cicd we'll have uh, three, four projects of cicd in our course right DevOps definition, if you are into definition, then um, this is by far the definition, the best definition that I like. DevOps is a philosophy of combining development and operations team together at culture, practice, and tools level, okay? Communicate, they have to communicate together. They collaboratively work together, integrate all the tools as in the DevOps lifecycle you have seen, okay? They integrate as the, employees also and also as the tools also all the tools are also integrated together okay so culture practice and tools level all right so so what are the skill set that you need in today's time to you know work into this in devops field right first of all you should have systems knowledge you know operating systems knowledge linux windows whatever operating systems you are using you should have good knowledge on that infrastructure knowledge storage networks firewalls operating system okay all this knowledge should be there how all these technologies work together 
cloud computing skills today for cloud computing skill is like a default skill for devops you need to know today cloud computing one of the cloud computing you should be good in right probably either aws or azure or google cloud okay but at least one you should have skill set the reason cloud computing is so popular in devops is because uh, uh, one uh, you can do automation if you have a cloud infrastructure you can do automation okay second the deployment becomes really easier if you have a cloud infrastructure compared to uh, data, uh, physical data centers that doesn't mean if that doesn't mean right that uh, if you don't have cloud computing you cannot implement devops it's not like that okay devops can be implemented anywhere but cloud computing is leveraged more you should understand the sdlc you should have the sdlc knowledge so you're going to do a lot of cicd project and you will understand that and you will get more detail about sdlc when you work with developers together build and release automation which is called as continuous integration that part needs to be automated you should understand that how to do it automation of operating system task okay by using tools like ansible or puppet or chef or scripting okay so you should be able to automate any operating system related task orchestration as i always tell people that you should know how to integrate technologies together okay if you don't know how to integrate you cannot create continuous delivery process right you should be having network and security knowledge as well because when you get into cloud computing you have to manage all that yourself and of course containerization that's the most demanding thing today um, if you have that knowledge you are preferred rather than to a person who does not have containerization knowledge okay take a look once again okay moving on so what we are going to do in the course course coverage okay the most important part for you for me the most important part was the devops demo i hope you understand them the devops now very well okay if you understand devops very well that's the victory okay now what we're going to cover in the course uh, we are going to do it like a pro okay we're not just gonna learn a tool and deploy a hello world program and we'll say hey devops is done no we're gonna do it like a pro like a professional how it's done in the projects so we also have a project we call it as v profile it's a web application which is written in java so we are going to use this project to do our other projects in devops okay you need to have a product so you can implement devops okay without a product it's very difficult to implement devops right and we are talking about implementing, not just learning to tools. So we have the product and uh, um, it, there are multiple technologies working together in this project to show you some real time challenges. Okay, it's going to be very challenging. Okay, we'll, we'll come to the vProfile project architecture okay, in some time. So there are multiple services. You have Nginx, Tomcat, RabbitMQ, Memcache, MySQL, MongoDB, Elasticsearch, multiple services in our vProfile project, okay? So you'll be learning how to set up them or manually, then automatically on VMs, on cloud, refactor them, do CI CD on that, do containerization of that, deploy this product to the Kubernetes cluster. So all that different, different projects, we're going to use this product. Okay, so in the course, in the course starts, the first step is gonna be basics. Okay, so if you are uh, the first step uh, will be around one week to 10 days. Okay, uh, if you are um, from the development or testing, you have, if you're from non ops background, okay, then this will be very good for you. You will learn here basics of Linux. You will see server management in, in Linux will deploy different servers, web server, database servers on Linux machine. You will see how it works. We'll use Vagrant automation tool which is uh, for VM automation, actually. We're gonna automatically set up VMs on our laptop. We'll also learn basics of networking, and we will deploy the vProfile project on our computer, okay? Locally first. That's gonna be your first project. This is first you're gonna see manual deployment, okay? And it's gonna be very long. Uh, it's gonna be longer session that day, okay? We'll deploy the entire product. So this is step one here, you, you know, uh, the eligibility is covered, okay? The prerequisite is covered. It could take seven to 10 days. Yeah. Wait, sorry, wrong, yeah. Then uh, step two, we'll start learning AWS. Okay, we'll learn services like IAM, EC2, 
volumes load balancers storage s3 cloud watch for monitoring rds for database auto scaling so we'll see how automatically scaling will happen route 53 and then we are going to migrate our v profile project to aws cloud by using these services and plus few more services okay so the setup is going to be like this. this is the architectural design so we're going to set up route 53 Amazon CloudFront application load balancer will be there. There will be a group of Tomcat instances in an auto scaling group. You'll have some other services that will be using Amazon MQ, Memcache, and RDS service. We'll also connect uh, external storage, S3, and EFS to it. Okay. So you will, in this part, you will understand how you can implement your product on AWS Cloud for productions. Okay. Not just implementation for dev and test production implementation, I'm talking about. Okay. That's going to be this year's second project. Now, in the third step, so what we do is now like the, the the course entire course will be like that. We learn some tools and technologies, and then we implement in the project. Okay, that's how we do. Step third is going to be continuous integration. You learn version control system, Git, Maven, and then you learn Jenkins for continuous integration. We're going to use this tool. So you're going to learn the build concepts, uh, build, test, deploy, notify, master slave concept. Other tools like Nexus, SonarCube that are involved in continuous integration. Uh, Jenkins continuous integration pipeline, you learn how to create it. Jenkins administration, also security will be covering of Jenkins here. And then we are going to do continuous integration for our V profile project. Okay, which will be like this the architectural design. Developer makes a code change. Okay, Jenkins is going to fetch the code, build the code, run some tests, then code analysis will be conducted. The software will be created, artifact versioning will be done, and the artifact will be stored. Okay. And then it will be also deployed to different environment to dev, staging environments, and then finally production. Okay. CICD pipeline will be seen. Once you understand the continuous integration and continuous delivery, the concept and doing it through Jenkins and by using some tools, then uh, I'll take a bonus session for you. Okay, it could be before uh, the CI process also. Okay, yeah, this is a bonus session. If you are uh, from operations background, if you are not aware about scripting concepts and you are scared that how do I do DevOps? I don't know programming. I don't know scripting. Okay, well, first guys, uh, you really don't need to be a developer to come into DevOps. Okay, uh, but you should have some programming knowledge or some scripting knowledge because. Uh, the tools, automation tool that we are going to use, uh, Ansible, Terraform, CloudFormation, or uh, we don't have to run some bash scripts uh, from Jenkins machine. So you should have some knowledge on scripting. For that reason, I'm going to take a bonus session for you. This is out of your course. You can join this bonus session. It could be probably on weekends, uh, Saturday, Sunday. So in this, we are going to cover bash scripting, basics of scripting concepts like basic concepts of bash scripting like variables conditions loops okay and we'll also then learn how you are going to automate a uh, regular admin day-to-day -day task by using bash scripts okay we're also going to use a lot of bash scripts in our course so you need to you know if you are not aware about bash scripting you better attend this session python scripting also we'll learn where we learn basics of python programming concepts like variables data types conditions loops functions modules okay you'll also understand what is json and yaml here we'll also use python for operate uh, no automating operating system task all right so this course is not just to teach you it's sorry, this sorry this session is not just to teach you automation but to you know enable you to learn other automation tools yes you will be able to automate things after this by using python or bash but main idea is uh, you should be able to learn other automation tool in great detail like ansible now ansible will also have concepts of conditions loops variables different data types right modules and all if you already know scripting then you can understand that very well and you can master these concepts so we're going to learn ansible in great detail we're going to have playbooks of hundreds and hundreds of lines of code okay so you're gonna understand how to write playbooks from the scratch okay you're also going to we're going to do a deep dive of variables in ansible which is very important 
roles concept then we'll also see how we can use ansible for operating sorry for aws automation okay you can automate aws task with ansible also so we'll see that we'll write our code for that once we are good with this then we are going to set up our entire v profile stack with ansible so we'll use ansible to set up our entire v profile product all the services nginx tomcat mysql everything okay and you will see how complicated it can get all right but don't worry i'll uh, show you how to do it from a very scratch but really to master ansible you should have some scripting background so that's why i'm taking the bonus session okay so will you will have ansible project where we'll use a lot of playbooks to deploy all the services nginx tomcat memcash rabbitmq mysql and we'll also use ansible to set up aws platform load balancers ec2 instances security group key pair all of those okay so two projects for ansible there and then aws part 2 gets started aws part 2 consists of other uh, uh, services for devops and development uh, but before we're going to cover vpc in depth we'll see log management how you can do the log management of different services by using CloudWatch. We're also going to use AWS CLI and S3 CLI. Beanstack. So we are going to deploy vProfile project here once again, but this is going to be different. We're going to refactor it. We're going to use Beanstack, RDS, and backend services. We're going to learn CI CD on AWS by using services like code commit, code build, code pipeline, code deploy. Okay, so we're going to see CI CD on AWS for vProfile project okay with jenkins and ansible also you can do also you can do in aws okay so no jenkins and no github and uh, no um, ansible those uh, tools will not be used we'll use all aws services to do ci cd over here okay in this project but that's why i tell you are we gonna i'm gonna show you how to excel in software delivery different different ways of to set up ci cd pipeline Route 53 policies also will be seeing over here different deployment strategies like blue green deployment, A B testing, what are they and how to implement it. Okay, so AWS second part. All right, so we have CI CD on AWS, code commit, code build, sonar cloud, code build, um, code deploy. Okay, on Beanstack, and that will be using RDS. We'll be storing our softwares on S3 bucket and everything will be combined together with an AWS pipeline surface. This is CICD on AWS. Step seven, here we are going to learn containerization. We'll understand what is Docker. Okay, we'll also, we'll understand a lot of concepts in Docker's volumes, networks, logs. We'll see how we can build images for a vProfile project containerization you will learn. You'll learn Docker Compose, Kubernetes, we are going to deploy a Kubernetes cluster for production. We also have EKS new addition to your batch. Okay, every time I you know add new new things and remove old things, this course is regularly getting updated as per the market. So EKS is the new entry in the course now. Kubernetes different objects you are going to see pods, services, controller, deployment replication, auto scaling, resource quota, secret, config map, namespace, all these different different objects of Kubernetes you will be seeing. Okay. And of course, we are going to deploy vProfile project on Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so here also we have two project. We have containerization first. Okay, uh, where we're gonna implement with, Do uh, with Docker Compose, a local development workflow we'll see. And, we, and also we're going to have another project. We're going to deploy our application V profile on Kubernetes cluster. This is production, okay, for production. So two projects there also. Of course, also with CI CD, we, you're also going to see CI CD on Kubernetes, okay, Docker and Kubernetes. Okay, so we'll build Docker images automatically. We'll test the Docker images and then we'll deploy to the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, this also we'll be seeing. Along with that, okay uh, i take workshops and i have workshop videos also that you will have access to so you can learn also terraform aws securities cloud formation 
Kubernetes ecosystems, Jenkins pipeline as a code, and any upcoming new technologies, I take workshop and those videos will be stored and you will have access to those videos as you will have access to your recordings also. Okay, uh, so you can join the uh, upcoming workshop. Upcoming workshop is going to be on Jenkins pipeline as a code, but you will, it will be very new for you for now. Okay, but anyways, if you are not able to attend the workshops, there'll be videos of it and you can access that anytime. So along with the course, you're going to learn other technologies also and you'll be keep learning as long as, you know, you have, uh, you know, you'll be on the portal, okay? Okay, not this one. Okay, so I'm wrapping up. Uh, so course USP guys, I focus on real time implementations and that's why we have multiple projects in our course. Okay. And you're also going to get regular assignments if you wish to do. Okay, uh, we are going to use Google Classroom for collaboration. You have any questions, any error you are getting, you can post it on Google Classroom, and then we can, you know, discuss it from here there. And you can ask any question in the class. Okay, what your issues that you are facing? You're gonna get a lot of materials. You have decoding DevOps book that I have written. You're gonna get that book, which will be your reference guide. Along with that, you're gonna get regular documents, scripts, and code which we use in our course. And Facebook group also for any new updates, any new videos that is getting updated in your portal, okay, any new workshop, all those update also you'll be getting from Facebook group, okay? So these are the course USPs, unique selling points, yeah. And I'm done, I will take your questions now. Wow, it's exactly 10. Okay, if you want me to explain anything, anything I can go back and explain things again to you, any concept in DevOps or any skill set. Or any points that we're covering in the course, right? So go ahead, grill me. Questions? Uh, Imran Hanman here. Uh, like, do we cover Kubernetes yes, most of the part? Or, uh, I'm sorry. Touch base with, uh, look, uh, do we cover Kubernetes most of the things, or just we'll touch base with Kubernetes? No, we are not going to touch base with Kubernetes. There is no touch base thing, uh, of okay. course. As I told you, see, we are going to in Kubernetes. You're going to do production grade deployment of Kubernetes cluster. That's one thing. Okay, not just a test environment. We are going to deploy our V profile. We are going to containerize our entire V profile project. Okay, and we're going to deploy it on Kubernetes cluster. And that is for production. Okay. That's touch base, right? And we're going to yeah. cover a lot of objects in Kubernetes, config maps, secret, volumes, deployment, interest controller, right? And we're also going yeah. to see CI CD for Kubernetes. And okay. that's C these are very, very serious things, man. Please, we do it in projects in real time. Okay, so it's definitely sure. not patch based. Okay, okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, hi, my name is Rahul. So in the interview nowadays, uh, they are grilling more and asking deep dive questions. So after this course, will we be able to crack the interviews uh, of uh, other companies? What is your name? Uh, Rahul. Oh, Rahul, your name is showing as admin. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah so you, your voice was breaking. You said uh, interview something. Uh, yeah, so after getting uh, complete, completing this course, we'll be able to crack the interviews. Like nowadays, they are uh, asking the interviews a uh, 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 bit deep and are grilling more on the technical and scenario-based questions on real-time projects. Let them, let them. You have lots of scenarios in the course, right? There are so many of my students who crack interview, man, <laughs> regularly, even before completing the course, okay? We have lots of scenarios because we have lots of scenarios in our course. Okay, starting from local deployment to how you're going to use Ansible to automate things, different CI/CD pipelines. Okay, uh, it's CI/CD on AWS, containerization, Kubernetes, a lot of production grade deployments you have, which we do it in real time. Okay. Okay. Right. If it's a DevOps interview, absolutely yes. But if it's not a DevOps interview, then no, okay, because uh, no, no, that DevOps, may sound a little uh, weird. No. What I'm saying, because people say that this is a DevOps profile, 
but then they hire you for uh, monitoring l1 l2 support a system admin job okay or dba okay. job they call them you know devops but then they ask questions on then you know java development right so if it's real devops interview you'll definitely be able to score well very very well okay okay Is, is my voice breaking or anything? No. Right. We can hear you properly. Uh, Imran, are you going to start from this Monday? Yes, this Monday. Actually, okay. it's already late. I was supposed to start yeah. on uh, this past Thursday. Last Thursday, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's yeah, already I, late. I've been waiting. I've been waiting actually. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so many people are pinging me like that. So. Actually, I was also um, uh, actually uh, doing something very amazing, uh, creating some uh, projects, project videos, 20 plus project videos, uh, right. which we're going to host in the portal uh, as a subscription basis and keep adding new, new projects, the real world projects, right? So we're going to cover like seven projects in our course. Apart from that, I do a lot of different, different kinds of implementation. So for that, I have created, I'm creating videos. Okay, very, very professional, find videos, fine tuned videos for product implementation, okay, project videos. So I'm very busy with that. And uh, hopefully in a month or so, you will also get uh, information about uh, uh, this project videos, which you can subscribe. Okay? okay, it will be regularly getting updated. There are more than 20 plus projects. Uh, you can talk about more and more scenarios. Okay, it's gonna make you real expert. So I was busy in that. So that's why uh, not able to start classes also early. Okay, thank you. One of my UK friend gave me your gave me your reference. Mm -hmm. Most of my students are reference only. <laughs> yeah. So when you do good, you make name, and yeah, actually, yeah. when uh, when when people like you, uh, you know succeed in implementing this in the project, uh, in interviews and all, that's the victory, and that makes me very happy. And then I don't need to do any marketing really. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, hi, Imran. Munichandra here. I yeah, have a question uh, regarding uh, these tools which you discussed till so far uh, uh -huh. for DevOps tools. So how we are going to manage while we are uh, taking the sessions? So it is all open source, or how we going to deal with these tools under? Okay, so uh, most of the all uh, the tools that we are using are going to be open source. Some are going to be trial based. Okay, AWS we are going to use a lot. So AWS you have a free tier account that you can subscribe for i'll show you how you can and uh, we'll try to stay under free tier as much as we can but when it comes to real time project implementation you will be charged little bit not too much few hundred uh 100 or 200 rupees when you do the when we do the projects okay not a regular charge from aws because i will show you how to regularly clean up your um, uh, aws stacks also okay so an aws part you'll get charged little bit not too much and all the other tools that we are going to use will be open source and some trial okay as you said with that uh, after installations while you are giving in, uh, sessions at the time we need to practice we are online only those tools under or we need to install our local machines how are you uh, your voice is breaking <clears throat> Uh, sorry, I mean to say that I mean as you explained like uh, all the tools are it is open source But how mm -hmm. we are going to deal with it? Is it uh, online uh, tools or it is uh, installing our local machines? No local will be only uh, first uh, Eight to ten days, okay local things mm -hmm. Okay Okay local implementation will be only in the you know, the in step one We're gonna deploy this product by using Vagrant virtual box and some scripts on local machine. That's the only local setup. After that, once we start AWS, then everything will be on AWS. All the tools, technology, services will be either installing or using from AWS. Okay, thank you. 
okay and, and you will have all the steps to how to do it how to do installation that's that's real you should really not concern too much about installing softwares okay in the first week itself we'll be expert in installing tools and technologies okay, okay. don't worry and and one more question uh, regarding as you said for uh, sessions recording so we will get access for each and every session videos because if you yes. any session or something every video so, whatever every video you will be getting recording but uh, i recommend you attend the course uh, and then watch the recording right if you have any question in implementing okay then you can ask me don't wait for you know i'll do it later i have the recording you know what's happening is you know people are getting recording so people are becoming lazy not getting up morning or uh, you know i will do it tomorrow today i'm very busy because of that what is happening is you know <clears throat> we are learning actually so many tools okay and they are all dependent okay it's going to be building block this course one what we are doing today will be based on what we did yesterday so if you did not do yesterday's class then today's class you know will be a problem for you okay so yes you will have recording that is for revision use it as a revision don't use it for doing the sessions okay you'll have the access for eight months to one year actually i think it's almost one year access you'll have to the videos the recorded videos plus the workshop videos also you'll have enough material don't worry about the material at all okay thank you but use it wisely that's my saying that's what i want to say hi ma'am this is sandhya um i would like Sorry. to know uh, yeah um i would like yep. to know how many hours uh, do i have to spend for this every day if i have to complete the task and all because i am absolutely uh, a beginner yeah okay. Okay, if you're new, what, uh, you you don't have any other background. Operations? No, I have done. Yeah, uh, no, no, no operations background. I have uh, uh, done a job on ETL testing. So, at present, I have taken up uh, a part-time job, but uh, that's why I would like to know how uh, how many hours. Um, so uh, I will not lie to you. Uh, with the course, you have to spend some. Initially, at least, you have to spend a lot of time. Okay once you're good proficient like at least first 15 days you have to spend a lot of time you should spend actually a lot of time first 15 days okay when we're mm -hmm. going to cover uh, basics and uh, aws of okay project implementation till here you have to do lots of practice okay in a, in you know as, as long as you don't get the concept you keep repeating it also revising it also so once you get hands on right once you have you once you become comfortable in the systems and cloud computing and all then doing these things okay uh, will be faster it's continuous integration you should be able to impl implement it very fast okay scripting you will learn you should be able to write it quickly anyway scripts you already will get playbook you should be able to write very quickly then okay if you know the scripting so it's going to be building block okay but first 15 days invest a lot of time everyone who are new in it industry or who are new in operations or scripting okay and devops first 15 days invest a lot of time and then uh, you don't need to spend much time okay but see you will only become expert if you practice class is going to be one hour to sometimes one and a half hour okay plus practice for one hour or two hours or maybe more if you're not able to do if you're troubleshooting yeah. but don't worry you will have everything step by step you'll have the recorded video so you can just do you know keep uh, doing also like copy paste work also you can do okay that also you can do <clears throat> and also how many months uh, approximately it will take two months, two months. Okay. and maybe few more days okay okay thank you Imran. No problem. Yeah. Hello, sir. I am Rashikar. Call me Imran. Here. You don't need to call me, sir. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Imran. I am Rashikar. Actually, I am from a non IT background. So, without any prerequisites, I can I able to do this. Okay. Same answer as it was for, uh, for Sam Samia. Okay. Uh, first 15 days, you have to work very hard if you're from non IT background. Okay, first 15 days you work very, very hard. Uh, if you're not doing anything, full day practice. 
okay if you're from non it background you let me know when the class starts it very initially in first and second day i will give you some extra material also to read and follow okay okay imran yeah once you get hands on in first 15 days you'll understand yourself that you are able to pull this off or not okay you will become okay. either very confident in first 15 days if you are practicing or if you are not practicing you will be you know maybe even drop okay so it all will be decided in first 15 days okay practicing okay. you have to do a lot of practice first yeah thank you hi imran i'm shivaji speaking uh Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so uh, actually, it is related to the last uh, last person's question only. So I'm not from IT background, and uh, I completed my MBA HR, and then I worked with Amazon uh, into customer service. Actually, uh, after that, uh, I thought of learning Python or any any coding language because I'm not from uh, uh, maths background. then i decided uh, uh, it would be better if i choose anything uh, uh, not related to coding a, li a little bit of coding and then uh, administration would be better so my question is if i if i join this course and uh, will i be eligible for the interviews like uh, for, for devops and then if i want to to join python later and uh, go into developer side any possibility of that uh, i just want absolutely wanted. very good question but so you you are not so sure now to whether do devops or python uh, programming like when you say python programming right so python programming is one thing and then you have to get into some or the other field by using python probably a uh, web development or data science or somewhere okay you have to go in some direction some specialization just by learning python you're not going to get any job okay you need to have okay. some specialization in python that's one thing okay. Okay. uh you don't want to do much of programming okay but see there is no sc i'm sorry sorry Hello. yeah uh, i'm sorry as i am not from math background uh, i just don't want to take a risk because i'm i'm id no, no, for no, two no. years now you don't now. need to be from a math background to do programming you are not getting into data science you are not going to write algorithms so you're going to use algorithms and you're going to use existing uh, product okay there are so many developers who does who don't even know what is lh lhs and rhs also okay <laughs> so don't worry about <laughs> math okay if you want to get into uh, data science then having maths background is very good okay web okay. development you really don't need okay so if you want to get into python programming okay you can go if uh, after doing devops you want to switch to python programming that is absolutely possible or the other way is also possible if you are a python developer you can switch to devops also okay you have to make the decision but it's going to be all uh, flexible agile don't worry okay it's not like if you get into okay. devops you can't move out or if you get into python you can't get, get into devops okay because de in devops people are from different different backgrounds okay you have developers you have testers you know you have even swimmers <laughs> okay adventurous guys okay. i had chef the finance guys okay. you bet it okay there are various kinds of audience students i had okay and they are now working also in devops field okay so so don't worry about type your type of yeah uh, it's a type of open source where uh, anyone can learn and uh, only only need is uh, we need to practice more and understand the theory or uh, practical part and then we can excel in the organization you uh, you voice what, uh, Shivaji, is it only for me can uh, other people hear his voice clearly or is it only breaking for me i don't know it is breaking actually sometimes breaking, breaking right? yeah. yeah yeah sometimes <clears throat> breaking yeah uh, you want me to repeat the question yes shivaji please i did not so understand your question telling, yeah you are telling devops would be the devops or any any software course is the open source wherein uh, we we have to I learn and the practice at all hello hello ma'am uh, am i audible your voice is breaking very badly shivaji you you can put yeah, your question okay. in the chat i'll answer it 
Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, I'll try to do that. Uh, actually, I'm using my mobile. I'm not able to chat. Uh, uh, am I audible now? Oh, okay. Or else... Hello? No, it's breaking, breaking very badly. Okay, I'll take... Uh, try once again. Else. Maybe I'll try to understand what was... Okay, I'm telling uh, DevOps or any uh, any software courses we are taking as the non-IT background uh, student. No, Hello? nothing. If anyone understood Hello? his question, can you rephrase it for me, guys? That will be a help. Okay, Shivaji, try again later. Uh, let me take other questions. Okay, okay. Hello. Hi, Imran. Yes. This is Asif here. Yeah, Asif. Uh, yeah, Imran. Uh, I am working as a automation tester. And mm -hmm. uh, no, I know I am aware of Java language and uh, Jenkins as well. To some okay. extent, not, okay. not an expert. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to know like how easy or difficult it will be for me to you know understand this Ansible, Nginx and all. See, uh, as I told you, Ansible, understanding Ansible. So most of the concern people who are not from, you already know Java, you said, right? So it will be very easy yes. for you to understand. Don't yes, worry. and I'm aware question. of Python as well to some okay. extent. Then, then it's not going to be a big problem for you, okay? You just need to practice, that's all. Okay, and uh, you also are a software tester, so you understand the process also. Okay, the delivery process, the build process, and also you you are in a very very close position than compared to many people. Yeah, yeah, and one more thing, like uh, what will be the timing of the class? It will be eight fifteen a.m. in the morning IST. Eight fifty. Eight fifteen one five. Eight fifty. Okay, fine, eight fifteen. And any alternate time for me? Because uh, I am staying in UAE and my office starts at eight o'clock. So, is there any uh, alternate time? No, actually, time? the the other uh, batch which will take I think uh, around uh, another uh, three weeks or a month to complete. That will be seven a.m. IST, just uh, one hour before this. So, these okay, two. So you will be taking the class. The, yeah, of course. Class. I'm talking about my course only. Okay, fine. Okay. Thank you, thank you. No problem. Hello, Imran. Am I audible now? Yeah, you're audible, and I see your chat also. Yes. So your question is, uh, you taking any software course? If I do more practice, understand practical things, I'll be eligible for an interview. Can switch my profile. So software core is as in the Python you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. That I can't tell you much, but uh, see, anywhere you have to get started, right? Yes, I, yes, I yes, hear yes. this question a lot. I'm a fresher, uh, you know, I don't have any background. So will I get a job? Okay, uh, remove that thinking, okay? And I'll get rid of that thinking. You have to get started some point of time by thinking that will, thinking that will demoralize you. It will be tough. Okay. Yes, it will be tough. But once okay. you make a decision, you work on it, you will achieve your target, okay? To, so don't uh, think in that track. I get this question a lot, actually. It's a very common question. And I tell this to people. You have to get started at some point of time. Okay, Everybody was a fresher. I was a fresher once. Everybody here was a fresher some point in time, right? But they got a job. Right? So if you work hard, you will get it. See, uh, and, and today's market is more about, you know, how much you know rather than you know, how much experience you had. Some people had 10 years of experience. I took interviews and they were so bad. Some people had one year of experience. They were very good. It doesn't matter how how much you work, you know, how long you work. It matters how well you worked and how, on how many technologies you work, how deep you worked, okay? And that shows in your interview. 
when i interview you know as being yeah. an interviewer myself in first 5 10 minutes i make out uh, does this person knows stuff or making it up okay oh. yeah understood thank you so much I am run I am from non IT background do I need to learn any other course along with devs no 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 along with this course don't try to learn anything else you will not have enough time that's one thing uh, plus we are taking things from very scratch okay very much scratch basics of linux we are taking so you focus on that uh, you uh, I will send you some more material on linux and other things so you know you have to practice more as i said first 15 days is going to be very crucial for you people okay And yes, you can. What after this course, can I be able to present you as three, four experienced person in DevOps? Again, the same answer as I told to Shivaji. Okay, how much you did? Okay, what all real time scenarios you had? You have to talk all those in the interviews. We are covering a lot of real world scenarios, so you can talk about that in the interview. Okay, three year experience, four year, ten year doesn't matter. That decides your salary. That doesn't decide your you know designation. Sorry, uh, your work. Okay, your experience decides your salary and designation, not the kind of work you'll be doing. All right, uh, Rajshree. Yeah. Imran, Anand, Anand Rao here. Uh, for this course, uh, the which one will be better, Windows laptop or MacBook? MacBook is fine. Windows laptop is fine. Lab, uh, Linux machine is also fine. In the first first day okay. itself, I'll be talking about prerequisite. Will I'll explain you. If you have Mac, okay. you do this. If you have Windows, you do that. If you have Linux, you do this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So any computer is fine. Hi, Imran. Asif here. Uh, Imran, yes, a few of my friend went for the interview, and they have been asked, you know, before starting with DevOps, uh, they started with, you know, asking like. Uh, Uh, did you guys manage any servers or load balancing on some part of security as well? Yeah, so yeah. Will, will we be covering these topics as yes, well? Yes, of course, absolutely. Those are very basic things, man. <laughs> We're gonna mm -hmm. go more deeper than that. Okay, yeah. absolutely. Those are very basic things: managing servers, load balancers, and all. We'll be doing that so many, so many times in our course. Okay. A V profile project is actually a lot of servers. Okay, so let me come here. So there are a lot of servers here: Nginx, MySQL, RabbitMQ, Tomcat. <clears throat> we will have Apache, Memcache, Elasticsearch. So a lot of servers, and we will be first implementing these servers in our local machines, then on AWS cloud by refactoring and using you know uh, PaaS and SaaS services. You're going to do CI/CD. The delivery is on the server itself. You deploy the product on the server. Okay. Uh, of course, you'll have load balancer. Let me zoom this one. Okay. So, Rule 53 Cloud Front. Then you have application load balancer there. We will have classic load balancer also. We'll use Nginx also as a load balancer. Okay. And you will uh, do it automatically through Ansible also. Okay. Here you're going to automatically create load balancers and instance servers. Okay. So Ansible, the CI/CD on AWS here also we're going to use a lot of services, not directly server, but SaaS, PaaS services. Mm -hmm. Servers you are going to also containerize all the servers. Okay, then on Kubernetes server you're going to deploy your complete application stack. Okay, automatically also, and then in Terraform, CloudFormation you will also see more automation on AWS cloud. Okay, so. So many times you will be implementing this. Is that all? Okay. If you don't have any other questions, then then we consider this a day. I hope you enjoyed the session. You understood what is DevOps and what all skill set you will need to become a DevOps candidate. Okay. Thank you.